Hi everyone and welcome to the first live session on the Left Angle uh, Twitch channel. I'm very, very exciting today. Um, my name is Francois Grassard. I'm one of the co-founders at Left Angle and I am also the chief creative officer. And uh, today we're going to talk about the software. We're going to talk about some specific topic. Um, I am pretty, pretty, really, really, really happy to be with you because it's sometimes really difficult to explain all the concepts available in Autograph because there's so many things available. And uh, that's the reason why we decided to make this kind of live session with you uh, and uh, to focus on specific topic and explain a bunch of things uh, on these topics. So today we're gonna talk about uh, just an overview of the main interface of the software. I'm gonna be really quick on, uh, on this topic because we already have a full tutorial available on our YouTube channel about this, uh, completely made for beginners. Uh, and after that, we're gonna talk about two really important concepts in autograph name generators and modifiers. And we will talk about how to connect parameters together, how to link and how to share uh, parameters. And uh, we will finish by talk about how you can work with PSD file, an SVG file, an EXR file, all these files who contain not only one image in this container, but a bunch of image. So let's jump into Autograph. And first I want to uh, remind that Autograph is fully available um, for free for 90 days. If you want to test the software, you just have to go to the uh, left angle website and uh, just create an account. You can download the software. It's fully, it's available for Windows, Mac and Linux. And uh, you have 90 days to try the software. So when you start with the software, uh, we have a welcome screen who will be available. And if in, in this case, it's closed. But if I click on the left angle logo on the top left of the interface, you can see that the welcome screen have a asset section. And in this asset section, you can have access to a bunch of projects. And to download this project, it's pretty simple. You just have to go inside the page and click the download project button. And as you can see, the project will be automatically um, downloaded and uh, available for testing the software. Uh, the project will be downloaded on your hard drive. Uh, here I'm on a PC, I'm on a Windows, so it will be on document, left angle, autograph and downloaded project. So if I want to download a new project, for instance, here, like the light streak reveal, I click on the download project button and now this project is added to this folder. Okay, so feel free to explore, but obviously it's always difficult to just open the project and go through the project to understand exactly how it uh, it works. So that's the reason why I want to explain a really basic concept today of the software. About the panel available in Autograph, you have the project panel on the left where you can import all your footages, your animation, your image, uh, your uh, SVG file, your PSD file, your EXL file. Uh, everything will be available in this panel. You can also import 3D assets. We will talk about this in, a, uh, in another set live session, obviously. You can also import table uh, such as CSV file to connect parameters to external data. And um, you have the viewer when you can see the result of your composition. You have the property windows can obviously show a lot of properties um, regarding the selected elements in the stack, There's the selected layers, the selected generators, the selected parameters, and the stack, obviously, when you can stack elements into your composition, when you can create your final image. And the difference between these two uh, panels, the property windows and the timeline windows, the stacks, the left part of the timeline with the stack, they have two different ways to represent the same information. In uh, the timeline, you can simply unfold each parameters to go through to access to the position, for instance. And in this case, you can also 
unfold the uh, transform parameters. But if you want to go inside an element, such as, for, for example, this uh, sources, this reader, you just have to click on the arrow on the right. You go through, you go inside this, uh, this source. Two different ways to navigate in your project. Here, you have to unfold everything. And here, you just have to go on, click on the arrow and get back into the hierarchy of your layers. So let's talk about um, two important concepts in Autograph, name the generators and the modifiers. I'm going to create a new composition and just um, drag and drop these images into this composition to create a new layer. Here we have a different kind of parameters. For instance, the source will contain two slots. The first one is made to define the generator and the second one is made to define modifiers, to add modifiers to these generators. These two concepts are always, always available for almost all parameters. For instance, if I unfold the transform parameters, I can find position X and Y. So it's a two dimensional uh, parameters. And here I can still have a slot to add a generator and a slot to add a modifiers or a lot of modifiers, not only one, but a list of modifiers. And if I take a look at the transform itself, you can also add generators to the transform and modifiers to the transform. So these two concepts are really important. Here in this project panel, I have a lot of reader. Okay, so the reader is obviously made to read a file and to output pixels. And you can read uh, movies, you can read pictures, you can read HVG file and so on. And when this reader is connected to a generator of a layer, this image is visible for this layer. If I um, select another reader and I drag this reader to the generator of this layer, to the source of this layer. As you can see, I change the content of this layer by this other reader. Okay. So here I have a layer, I have a source for this layer who define um, it looks. And uh, if I uh, switch the source by another one here, I can switch the source, I, I can change the generator by another one. You can also define a local generator. For instance, here, I'm going to replace this reader, this connection to the reader, because here, when I drag and drop this image to the slot, I create a connection between the reader and the source. But I can say I don't want to use uh, one of the elements available in the project windows, but I want to create, for instance, a generator who going to generate a polygon. Okay, so it's exactly the same concept, a layer as a source who produce pixels, and these pixels are created using the generators. The generators can be a reader, but it can also be a local generator, such as a polygon, such as a circle, such as a grid. So, and when I replace these generators by another one, as you can see, these generators and all the parameters of the generators here are changing. If I switch from grid to circle, all the parameters here are changing because they are uh, provided by the circle. So when I click on the circle, as you can see, now I am focused on the properties windows and I can change the parameters such as the offset or the radius on the edge mode style if I want uh, for instance, to have an outline, the outline of the circle, but not the inner circle. As you can see, I can change the thickness and uh, I can switch when I want this generator by another one. That's really important to understand this concept because here I use generators or generate an image because the source of a layer is a image parameters. It's made to receive an image, but if I 
now focus on the position parameters. I have a two-dimensional parameters who is made to receive numbers, to receive numerical uh, value. And this numerical value can be generated by a numerical generator. So in this case, this slot is made to connect an image generators. And in this case, this slot is made to connect a numerical generators. If you create a text layer, for instance, here, I'm going to hide this one. The source now is text and this source text is now um, a source made to receive a string, to receive characters. So these generators will be um, made only to create characters. So depending of the type of uh, parameters you use, you don't have the same list. For instance, here I have a uh, number to string, I have a numeric comparator, I have a bunch of things who can generate strings, who can generate characters. If now I focus on the position, like this one, I can have generators who generate numbers such as random or such as noise. For instance, I use uh, a random generators here and I say I want to generate a number from, for instance, minus 250 to 250, positive 250. And now nothing changed because the varying is set to none. So this value is defined, but it is not changing uh, over time. If now I set the varying to time, like this one, okay, as you can see, each time a new number is defined and inject pushed into the position parameters for the X parameters and the Y parameters. You have two different seeds here. If you want, for instance, to change the random generators generated for the Y value, you can change only the seed for the Y value and you can change the seed for the X value if you want. Exactly the same concept all the time. Every parameters have a generator slot and you connect a generators who generate image or 3D models or text or numerical values. So keep this in mind. That's really important because it's going to make the whole thing simpler to understand when you understand that all the parameters are always the same, not the same type, but the same way to connect things. And uh, it's also important to remind because uh, when you want to connect two parameters together, a position to position or a scale to a rotation, you have to think about the type of these parameters. Uh, you cannot connect, for instance, directly a numerical value to a 3D model, for instance, because it doesn't make sense. So you have to think about uh, the type of your parameters. And after this, you have to think about how I can generate things, how I can generate number in uh, these parameters. So after this, once you generate something, you can modify this thing. So once again, depending of the type of parameters you, uh, you are working on, you won't have exactly the same list. For instance, uh, if I work with numerical value, I have math and animator and loop animation, time offset and remap. And if I work with images, so with the pixels who are uh, resulting from these generators, I have a bunch of modifiers and these modifiers will apply on images. If I, for instance, add a modifier blur here, I'm going to blur this circle, okay? And this modifier is intended to modify the input created by this generator, so I can still get back to the uh, generator and change the radius, for instance, or the thickness. So um, you can only have one generator for one parameters, not a layer, but parameters like this one, but you can add a bunch of modifiers for instance, I'm going to add a fill here, modifiers, and I'm going to fill the uh, shape of this circle, this blur circle, with red color. Okay. So now I have two modifiers who modify these pixels created by the generator. And if I uh, get back to the modifier list here, I can turn on and off each modifier. 
Okay, so think about the hierarchy of this layer. As you can see, this layer has a source. It uses a source with the circle, and this circle here has modifier applied on it, and I can enter the blur like this. Let's get back to uh, the stack for now. Um, I'm going to create a new composition and just drag uh, this character or maybe just this logo and the other logo here. Okay, so now I have two layers. Um, I can have, I'm gonna get back to the, to the initial composition just to talk about something we talked in the first tutorial, but when you want to select something in autograph, you can just move your mouse over your layer. And as you can see, you have the silhouette of your layer blinking to say, okay, you are over this layer. So now you can click on it and select it and move it like this. And uh, you can also do this for the logo, but I want just to, to show you that you can pick through the alpha channel to select, for instance, the gradient in the background. And that's really important because uh, most of the time in, in compositing application, uh, you cannot click through the alpha channel. You have to rely on the stack to know exactly who is over who. And you can also use this visual stack here, uh, which is really, really handy to know exactly who is over who. And you can select here on directly in, in the viewer, or you can also uh, directly select layer in the visual stack. I have two logo in this composition. And if I want to access parameters, uh, such as the transform, such as the position or things like this, I can obviously unfold these parameters and I can also unfold these parameters in the properties windows, but we have shortcut to only uh, display position or rotation or uh, any kind of parameters who is contained in the transform section. And for this, you can click on this list at the bottom of the timeline and uh, click on transform or maybe position or rotation. And as you can see, you have shortcuts available to quickly, for example, only show the rotation of the two logo. Okay. So now I want to change the rotation of this, uh, this parameter. So think about the generators and the modifiers. Okay. That's two really important concepts, but now we're going to talk about two a uh, really important concept too, who are linking and sharing. And after this, we're gonna see how to mix them together to connect, to change the source, to share source. So let's talk about the rotation because it's really simple to understand. If I select the two rotation and if I drag my mouse after clicking this value, I can rotate the two logo at the same time. If I rotate only the first logo and want to connect these parameters to the over rotation parameters, I can do this in two ways. The first one, the most common one available in a lot of uh, compositing software and also animation software is to link. Here, for instance, I'm gonna say, I want to link these parameters to these parameters. And now, as you can see, when I change value on these parameters, when I um, change the rotation now of these parameters, as you can see, this one is driven by the other one. So we have the concept of driver and driven, okay? It's a one directional connection between uh, the two parameters. If I want to change this rotation value, I cannot do this because this one is fully controlled by the other one. If I want to uh, disconnect these parameters to be able to change this rotation, I can simply click on this plug, okay, and say disconnect. I have the full control over this parameter again. Link is really useful, but as you can see, you always have the concept of who control who, who is the driver and who is the driven parameters. So in Autograph, we have a different concept named sharing. As you can see, it's exactly in the same menu. And I'm going to say, I want to create a share group. So copy share group of these parameters. And now you can see a share icon here and say, I want to paste this share group. Visually, you have exactly the same thing. Okay. You have one rotation value who drive two parameters, but actually it's not exactly the same because 
you do not have anymore the concept of driver and driven. Every parameters can define their own values. Okay, they share an intermediate value, and you don't have to think about who control who. Obviously, here I do this thing with only two layers, but there's absolutely no limit. Uh, you can share parameters between 50 layers if you want, no limit at all. And uh, we're going to see that you can share not only numerical value, but also textual value. You can also share complete modifier about this. So that's really important to understand this concept. So if you want to unshare something, and this concept of sharing is really important when we will talk about how to work with PSD file and SVG file, an EXR file because the sharing process is a huge part of how you can uh, extract a path from an EXR file and uh, from a PSD file too. Keep this in mind. If you change something on one parameters, it will change on the other. Okay. If you want to unshare something, you just have to click on the generator slot and choose unshare. I'm going to do it again with these two fighters. I put this one on the left, I put this one on the right, okay? And I just show the two position parameters, okay? And I'm gonna switch the these two dimensional parameters to separated X and Y. Quick reminder about this. In autograph, when you have multi-dimensional parameters, you can show all these dimensions on the same line. And so if you add a keyframe, for instance, you're going to add these keyframes to these two value, to these two sub-parameters. And you can also separate uh, these two parameters to have two individual lines on which you can add a keyframe only for X or only for Y. And you can also even one value for the two. So in this case, uh, it's going to be a bit weird because uh, if X and Y parameters is exactly the same value, my fighter is going diagonal. And if I want to now exactly place this element where I want, I have to switch back to unified or to separated. Here, I'm going to separate the two value separate X and Y. And now I want to also separate X and Y for the other one. And I want to simply uh, create a copy link from this one and a paste link for this one. Okay. So now my two fighters are overimposed. Okay. If I put this opacity to uh, 0.5, I'm going to see my two fighters at the same time. And now this value is inherited from this one, but I can add a math modifier and here I can offset this one okay based on the position of the first fighter so now if I move move my first fighter I can see the second one moving two but with an offset okay and that's really handy because um, quick reminder again the zero zero the origin of the composition is always at the center of the format and it's really handy because you can, for instance, just multiply this value by minus one, and now you have an animation completely symmetrical between the two fighters. And you don't have to animate the two fighters, you just have to animate the left one, and the right one will be automatically uh, animated too. Now I'm going to um, go through um, the concept of sharing anything else that's just numerical value, but maybe a modifier. So for instance, here I'm going to um, just remove the link between the two. So I get back to the position. Um, I remove my modifier and I disconnect this one. So the default value, the value who was the value of these parameters before the linked is now retrieved. So the position of this uh, fighter is exactly the same as before the linking process. Okay. So the value are kept in the parameters. And if you break the connection, if you break the link between the two parameters, the value uh, who was used before the linking process will be reused again. So on the left fighter, I'm going to just add a blur modifier. Okay. And when you add a modifier to a source, you can see that you have, I'm going to get back to this layer. You, you use this reader 
and you add modifier to this source. In this case, a bilateral blur or more simpler, just a blur, okay, like this one. So simple blur on the left fighter. Okay. Now I can simply select this blur, select the other fighter and copy paste. Okay, I select, I copy, and I select the other one, and now I paste the blur modifier. But if I change the size of the first blur, as you can see, nothing is connected. Of course, I can click on the generator slot and click on copy link, and then access the over generator slot on the over blur, okay, of the size, and click paste link, and the two will be connected. Uh, I'm gonna do this on the second layer, like this one, okay? I have a modifier and a blur on it, and now I can paste link. And as you can see, this value is grayed out because it's completely controlled by the first one, okay? And if I change this value, I control the two, okay? But I want to go uh, further like that, okay? I'm gonna disconnect these two value here. <clears throat> I'm gonna remove the blur on this one. And now I want to select the blur itself, the wall blur, and control C to copy, okay? And now I'm going to select the second filter and go to the action button, okay? When you can have copy selection, paste, it's nearly similar to an edit menu, but it, all action are available here. Now I'm going not to paste modifier, but to paste modifier in a shared manner. If I click on shared now, as you can see, all the parameters of the blur have this share icon. That's because they are completely shared with the over value of the blur applied to the over fighter, the fighter on the left. So now if I change any kind of parameters, such as the size, such as uh, the blur type, Gaussian, box, triangle, quadratic, and so on, okay? Everything is shared, is not linked. Keep the difference in mind, okay? That's really important. Everything is shared, and I can override locally a value. For instance, I want to unshare the size parameters, so now I can adjust the size of the fighter on the right, and I can also adjust the size of the blur for the fighter on the left. They are completely unshared, they are completely disconnected, okay? But all the over parameters are still shared. If I enter the blur on one fighter or the other, we don't care. We can change the filter, okay, such as Gaussian, and as you can see, these two parameters are still shared together, okay? So that's really important to keep this in mind because uh, when you have multiple modifiers, such as blur, U-shift, and things like that, uh, apply to several layers at the same time, and you want to keep everything connected, everything synchronized, it's really handy to work that way instead of, of just copy-paste a modifier from one layer to another. Uh, you just have to click on one of them, you don't care which one, and you change the value, and the value will control all the other layer around. You can apply this concept to numbers, just numbers, okay, um, such as position, rotation, scale, and so on. You can apply it to modifiers, but you can also apply it to modifiers group. For instance, let's get back from the beginning, two fighters, one on the left, one on the right, and I want to add a blur here, once again, and I'm gonna add a second modifier, U-shift, for instance, I'm gonna simply change the angle to make this one blue. And instead of just selecting one modifier at a time, I'm gonna select the modifier group, okay? Or contain all the modifier. Now I control C, so I copy, I select the other one, and now I paste share the wall, the entire modifier group. Not just one modifier one by one, but the wall group and that's really important because you will see that when you add new modifier, when you remove a modifier, everything will be connected. So now if I 
unfold or inspect the blur modifier in the property window or the U shift also, you can see everything, every parameters are shared. And now I can change the size here of the blur. Okay, obviously, as, as I did previously, I can unshare uh, these parameters to only have a local overriding of these parameters. But most important, if I remove the U shift on this one, on the left, fighter, as you can see, the U-Shift is now removed on both layers. Um, if I, for instance, uh, add a clamp modifier, not a clamp, but maybe a threshold, like this one, okay, it's going to be more visual. Uh, I add a threshold on the left fighter, and as you can see, it has been automatically added to the right fighter too. So the modifier group is really, really handy to share a bunch of modifiers at the same time. Instead of copying one of them, they're getting back to the original modifier group and so on and so on and so on. You will not only uh, copy and paste the current state of the mod modifier group, but the state now and the state in the future. Okay, so here I can simply remove one blur. You don't care about if you have to select this fighter on this fighter. You don't have to do this. So I have a question. Does the blur have a repeat edge pixel option? So you don't say, yes, we have this. We have three options. Uh, so I have to uh, add a blur again because I just removed it. Yeah, I have a border and we have repeat black and repeat RGB with black alpha. So depending on if you want to repeat the pixel located at the border of your image, you can use this. So you can also share sources. For instance, if you want to synchronize to share the source itself, here I have to select, um, just uh, don't want to mess up with my two fighters. Okay, this one is already there, uh, here. Uh, I'm gonna drag this one to the other layer. When you drag a source to a layer, uh, for instance, in uh, a software like in After Effects, you have to place the Alt key and drag and drop the source to the layer. Here, you don't have to do this. You can simply drag the source to this button or this slot. It's exactly the same thing. This one is useful to directly change the source without unfolding anything. And if you have unfold uh, your, um, your layer previously, you can drag this one uh, to here. So, as you can see here, you have exactly the same source used by both layers, but they are completely individually set. Okay, You don't have any link between the two, but you can say, okay, I want to uh, create a, a link between the two, like this one, so I'm gonna simply copy the source, okay, and here I can paste a link to have exactly the same source. So now if I take this source and change one source and change both sources at the same time because the sources are connected together. It's also really useful when you have multiple layers who use exactly the same image at, um, or animation or SVG or PSD or whatever. And you want to maintain a connection between all these layers. So if you change one sources on one layer, every layer will be replaced at the same time. You don't have to create uh, pre-composition, you can simply connect the source together and if you change the source of one layer, every layer will be replaced at the same time. Let's talk about uh, how this concept can be useful when you work with a PSD file, an SVG file and EXR file. If you do a lot of compositing using EXR file, uh, we're going to see how to manage this thing. But I want to start with uh, um, the PSD file, because a lot of people use a Photoshop file. So I'm gonna double click on this uh, image in the project panel to uh, display it in the uh, viewer. So here you have a red square uh, around the B slot. Okay, you have two connections uh, to, to the viewer, the B slot with the main slot and uh, the A slot with an additional slot when you want to compare two sources at the same time. So the B slot is red because it's not linked to a composition. Okay. If you create a composition and put, for instance, this pyramid in uh, as a new layer and you move this layer, okay, if you double click 
this uh, pyramid PSD file in the project panel, you are not looking uh, at the composition. And it can be uh, like a trap, you know, because you select this one, you say, okay, why I cannot why I cannot move this uh, pyramid anymore. I don't have the widget. So that just because you are not uh, looking at the composition. I double click the composition to get back in this composition. If I just click the pyramid to inspect the source, you have a lot of parameters here to define when you have an animation, what to do when you play uh, the animation multiple times when you go further the duration of the animation or when you go before the animation. So you can define a proxy file when you have really huge, huge file who is really difficult to read um, or it's really slow to read when you have really huge uh, EXR file. For instance, you can define a proxy file who will make the reading process easier uh, when you are, for instance, under uh, 60% zoom in uh, in your viewer. So you can define your proxy file here and define how this proxy file will be switched um, to be used in your project instead of your original file. You have a bunch of, of, uh, of options here, obviously a lot of uh, options regarding pre-multiplications, background colors, color correction, and I want to be focused on the output part. Because the PSD file, exactly the same concept, uh, as the EXA file and its VG file. It does not contain only one image, but a bunch of layers. So by default, the output part is flattened. So you have all the layers flattened to create only single, only one single image. But you can also here just move your mouse over the different layers to inspect all the layers available in the PSD file. And if you want to create a composition based on this PSD file with different layers in uh, autograph pointing to all the layers available in the PSD file, you just have to right click uh, this image in the project panel and uh, choose create composition from PSD layer. So now a new composition appears in the project panel. And as you can see, all layers are now available and they all pointing to a different output part. Here, as you can see, I have the share icon when I inspect this pyramid, this original file. But if I just select the pyramid itself here, okay, just to work with this specific layer. And now I want to inspect the source used uh, by this layer. Every layer are pointing to exactly the same file, the same PSD file, but the only unshared parameter here is the output part, okay? And in this case, the output part is pointing to the pyramid layer um, who is existing in the PSD file. So I just have, for instance, to move my mouse over this list to switch this layer by another output part, so by another layer available in the PSD file. That's really important to understand this concept of output parts because uh, that's exactly the same concept used by EXR file and SVG file. I'm going to show you in a minute. So keep in mind, only one PSD file exists, but for every layer who use this uh, PSD file, a different output part is used. A reader is connected to this layer. The output part parameters is unshared and you can select the layer you want. That's really important because when you have to modify this PSD, you just have to select the reader, replace the PSD. And if all layers are named exactly the same, obviously, because we have to keep all the reference to have exactly the same reference between the PSD file, you just have to replace this one and all available output parts will be redirected to each of these uh, layers used uh, in, uh, in Autograph. Get back, I made a short uh, on YouTube two weeks ago or something um, to use the concept of generators and modifiers with this PSD file, and I'm going to show you how you can do this really quickly to create not a 3D matte painting, but a 2.5D matte painting just by using uh, the concept of parenting and also just a null. A null is simply a layer who do not have any source. As you can see, it's generator who define its source to know exactly how it looks. 
is empty for now. But I can simply drag this source to the generator slot to suddenly have a null who is not invisible, but who have a source, okay? So if you want to create a layer uh, who doesn't have a source like this one, it's gonna be just a null, okay? So no pixel will be connected to this source, but you still have transform information such as the position, such as the scale, such as the rotation, okay? So here I just want to add a null. I'm gonna say, uh, it's gonna be the cam position, in, even if it's not really a camera, okay. And now I'm gonna to switch to uh, a module made to create parenting relationship between uh, the layers. Um, compared to After Effects, when you have to define the relationship in the stack here, okay, and it's sometimes a bit messy to understand exactly who is connected, who is parented to who, you can simply say, okay, I want to uh, drag this uh, null to the module on the right, to the parent module on the right. So as you can see, the dub sheet has been switched by this secondary module, uh, mainly uh, done for uh, the, um, the parenting and read the chat at the same time. Uh, those autographs include a scripted language analysis to expression in uh, After Effects. Yes, yes. And um, to enter expression, that's, that's a re really good question because uh, to add an expression to a parameters, sorry, uh, you just have to add a, I'm um, going to do this on the rotation, you just have to add a, an expression generator. Um, and just... Uh, Okay, it's here. Okay, I miss. I missed it in the list. So I was a bit scary. Let's see. Oh, where is it? But uh, now you have an expression, and it's nearly similar uh, to the one using After Effects because it's based on JavaScript. So uh, it's fully documented in uh, in the documentation of uh, Autograph. And yes, you can create expression, but. Obviously, you can create expression, and I don't want to go against expression, obviously, but the concept of generators and modifier has been made to not use expression when you don't have to use them. I'm gonna go through my example here um, and get back to the parenting module. As you can see here, I drag the null first, and then I select all the layer and drag the layer to the null to define the null as the parent and to define all the layer as children. So now if I move this null, okay, as you can see, I move all the layer also in the composition. Just um, to get back to a really basic concept, if I want to see outside the format of my composition, I just, I just can uh, turn off uh, the clipping option and I can see outside here to know exactly the size of my different uh, layer available in my PSD file, okay? So the most important thing to understand about the parenting here is uh, that you can define a weight for this parenting process. I'm gonna explain this more clearly. When I move this null, I drag, and I can also rotate, obviously, all uh, the layer, with the same amount. All layers are moved by the same amount because when you create a parenting relationship between this null and a layer, you add a modifier on the transform, okay? So creating a parenting relationship in Autograph is made by obviously drag and dropping really simply from left to right, okay? But when you do this, modifiers are added to each layer, and as you can see, I have a modifier applied on the transform, so it's a really specific modifier made only for transform. Remember, the list of modifiers will be different depending on the type of parameters you're working on. This parent uh, relationship defines the parent as the cam position transform, but you have an amount here. So if I, uh, what is my current, uh, layer, I'm gonna work with the pyramid, it, it will be obviously more visual. Um, if I move here my cam position, okay, I move all the layers with the same value, but now 
if I reduce the amount here of uh, this uh, parenting value, as you can see, you can create a parallax effect between the pyramid and the over um, layers available in your composition. Okay, so by this way, you can create um, something. You don't have to define all this value manually. Okay, um, I'm gonna show you how you can do this. Just going back to position and uh, reset this position value to the default. So the pyramid is now get, getting back in at the center of the composition. I'm just going to the first layer, go through the modifier, and I'm going to define the amount value by the uh, layer index. Okay, so each layer has an index. This one is the first one, this one is the second one, three, four, five, as you can see on the left, because you have the number uh, of the layer. And using a generator, I'm gonna say, I want to put in this amount value something depending on the layer index. Okay, so now if I do this, as you can see, this amount value is now two, because this layer is the layer number two. But if I uh, select this amount and now uh, copy using the control C uh, and now select all the other layers and go to paste share, as you can see, I can paste share a parameter, so the parameter amount. Now I paste and share, that's really important to keep the share in mind, these parameters to all the other layer. And now if I move, as you can see, this uh, null, okay, this layer have an amount defined by two, this one defined by three, this one defined by four, and so on and so on, okay. So I create a really simple parallax effect, is inverted, as you can see here, okay, but I can, after that, add a modifier on this value generated by the generator, who will use the index of the layer to define this value, divided by the number value, and so on and so on. Uh, as I said, you can uh, take a look at the shorts I made. Uh, you can see in 60 seconds all the, the tasks I did. Code can be really scary for a lot of people most of the time. That's the reason why we want to give access to all this functionality without any line of code. But if you want to use expression to do this kind of thing, to not use a modifier and generator to create this kind of behavior, of course, you can do this, okay? So, uh, now you understand the concept of output part for the PSD, okay, the PSD file, when you can define which layer will be mapped to which layer, okay. Uh, is there a maximum number to the layer? No, no, no limit. Uh, to be honest, I have to test with a composition with 1000 layer, but uh, I made composition with uh, 150. And uh, this kind of thing was uh, still okay. So now I'm gonna finish by talk about the uh, SVG file and also the uh, EXR file. I'm gonna start with the SVG file. Once again, I double click on it and inspect this image. I'm just gonna turn off the color picker. And I can uh, output all the layer into a flattened image or I can use the path and go through the path exactly the same way I did previously with the PSD file. So the same concept applied to both file type. Uh, the XR file is exactly the same thing. So to create a composition based on a SVG file, once again, you just have to right click and create composition from SVG. And now you have two possibilities, preserve style. So I'm gonna click OK just to see exactly what happened. Uh, a new composition is created and as you can see, all layers are created according to the number of paths available in your SVG file. So be careful if you have thousand uh, of uh, paths in your uh, SVG file, it's gonna be obviously really heavy because you're gonna have thousand of layers, but that's really interesting because now, for instance, if I uh, select the G here or the arc of the G, um, I can simply animate this 
single layer, okay? And I have a few options to recenter the anchor point to according to the bounding box of this layer, uh, such as uh, here, clicking, selecting this layer, uh, obviously, before uh, clicking on this button, and say, I want to recenter according to the bounding box or the composition, but now I'm going to work on the bounding box, and I want to center my anchor point uh, according the bounding box of this layer. So now I can rotate according to the center, the visual center of this element. You can do the same thing uh, for the A. So say I want to, uh, to recenter the anchor point, okay? And now I can move both using uh, the anchor point of this selection, but I can also say I want to move every element using their individual anchor point. So that's the first way to work uh, with uh, SVG. And the second way is to choose the over option group path. And by doing this, now I have only one layer, but I have a shape stroke here who create the outline of the SVG file. Okay, uh, all the paths contain of the, in the uh, SVG file. And I can uh, simply increase the stroke, I'm just going to not uh, zooming into the, the picture, um, just um, switching this one to white and reducing the size of the stroke, like this one. I have a bunch of options such as solid, dash, uh, dash dot. I could create a custom pattern if I want uh, by uh, clicking the plus button and adding element and defining the dash length, the dash space. Um, nearly similar to what you have in uh, Illustrator, for instance, or uh, when you work on vectors. So um, here I have a pass group and in this pass group I have several paths, okay? And if I switch to the shape tool, I can change the position of this point, okay? And every point can be keyframe individually if you want. It's really handy when you work on a rotoscopy when you have to create a bunch of shape and you want to keyframe only one point in a shape. So you can add keyframe for all points in this shape, but you can also create only a keyframe for this point. You have access to the point, to this left tangent and to its right tangent. So it can create a bunch of points, obviously, but uh, it's really important for us to give you the full control over your shape. And uh, after this, you can obviously play with this start end uh, parameters to draw this outline one letter by the other, okay, and also uh, offset the stroke by uh, the stroke width. And uh, I'm just looking for the parameters. Oh, okay, this dash offset to create this kind of animation, okay. So, two ways to import a SVG file one pass equal one layer or path also in uh, autograph and pack in a pass group. Okay, and once again, I want to get back to the initial topic of this video. Uh, pass group can have here expression or bind to the bail. It can have generators and it can also have modifiers. Okay, so always the same concept apply to any kind of parameters, text, images, numerical value, pass, generators who generate something and modifiers who will modify this thing across time. Everything can be animated, of course, and so on. So I will finish by do exactly the same with uh, EXR file. If you work with compositing, if you do heavy compositing, you will work with EXR file. EXR is exactly the same concept as PSD, okay? Because it's an image who contain over image. So once again, I double click on this living room uh, Excel file sequence and I have the output part and now I can go through the different passes available in this file, okay? And if I want to create a composition based on all these passes, I can right click on this image and uh, choose create composition from EXR passes. Now a composition is created, all the passes are extracted Exactly the same concept as for the PSD file. You only have one EXR file, so you can uh, easily switch one EXR sequence from one another just by going uh, 
to the reader and click on the reload if you overwrite all your images or simply uh, click to browse to point to over EXR file. And after this, you because EXR file does not contain information about the stacking, you don't know in a EXR file how to stack different passes, this one on top, this one on bottom, or this one with this kind of uh, a blending mode, you have to do this manually one time. So for instance, this uh, I'm going to simply move this one, these three uh, different passes to a pre-composition. Okay, so now I have a second position. Same, uh, I name it pre-composition to make it fully understandable for people who came from After Effects. So I move the three passes into a new composition and now as you can see I have the glossy uh, direct, glossy indirect and color. This rendering has been created with Blender with cycles and cycles have a documentation to explain exactly how to combine the passes. So here I'm going to simply um, say I want to add these two passes together, the indirect, uh, indirect and the direct passes. So as you can see, I use the add blending mode to add the two passes together. And the last one has to be set to multiply, okay? Like this one. So now I have my glossy uh, component of my rendering. Uh, I'm gonna get back to this element here. <clears throat> so once again, create composition from EXR pass. I have a full composition and I'm gonna do exactly the same thing with the diffuse passes. So I create a sub composition from selection. It's exactly the same shortcut as in After Effects. So you won't be lost. Uh, I enter the sub composition. Now I can reorder all the passes like this one. And I can say, I want to I'm gonna just hide this one. I want to add the two passes and I want to multiply the last passes like this one. Okay. So that's the way you're going to work with EXR file with multiple passes. Um, here in my passes, I have one named beauty. That's the final rendering here. So here I'm reading, a. Uh, OpenXR file compressed in zip, but it's also available in DWAA, DWAB, uh, in PIS, in B44. And uh, here to finish demo, I just import a sky uh, images. As you can see, it's AVIF. It's not so common uh, to use AVIF images, but Autograph is based on uh, OpenImage.io. And OpenImage.io can open a bunch of images and a bunch of animation. In Autograph, you can work with MKV file, you can work with WebM if you want, uh, you can produce WebM also. Um, for instance, here I want to create uh, a rendering from this composition. Uh, as you can see, we have a bunch of container uh, such as QuickTime, such as, such as QuickTime, such as uh, MKV, WebM, MXF, OP, uh, OP1A, and uh, all um, codecs for, uh, for instance, the Apple Press are available, such as the 422, 42LT, 42 Proxy. So we don't have any kind of limitation. You can <clears throat> simply drag a video from internet, maybe from YouTube, maybe most of the time you can work directly with it in Autograph. You don't have to convert it. And uh, if a uh, file type is missing, just let us know and we'll do our best to integrate it if it's useful for you, of course. Um, so just to finish, I'm going to create a new composition, put this one in it, and I'm just going to add a new modifier on this composition, on this pre-composition, this sub-composition. I'm going to add volumetric rays here, okay, to generate light rays who pass through the windows. I'm gonna increase the quality and add to the source. Okay, so as you can see, uh, it we do our best to to uh, keep the engine reactive, even with a really, really huge file like this uh, OpenXR sequence. Uh, we try to do our best to read them really quickly. Obviously, when you work with a lot of passes, when you have 20 or 30 passes in the same project, all these passes has to be decompressed. 
so it's always a trade-off between uh, the kind of codecs, the kind of compression you're going to use, uh, DWAA or ZIPs or ZIP. Uh, it depends of the kind of hard drive you have and the kind of uh, processor you have. So you have to think about what is the most suitable for you because you have a bunch of codecs available in OpenUXR and sometimes it's slower to use this one rather than this one depending on your hardware. So uh, that's it for today. Um, I'm going to get back on screen. Hi. <laughs> so thank you very much for being here today. Um, if it was our first live, we will uh, do um, this kind of live or different kind of topic, the instancer, the 3D, um, how to create a 3D scene, for instance. Uh, it can be really, really handy. Uh, when I uh, create a project with the Pyramid, it wasn't in 3D, okay? It artificially generates a Parallax effect when you move the null, but you can also do exactly the same by creating 3D plane with uh, image on each 3D plane and create a real 3D environment and put real 3D object between the plane. So it's, uh, in this case, it was a really simple case, but uh, in another live session, we will talk about this. Okay. Um, How is the responsive in 8K? Obviously it depends of your computer, but uh, if you use the proxy, so, the proxy file is here for this. You can define a proxy file where your file will be smaller and easier to read. So the software will be uh, will keep responsive. And um, at the end, you can go to the render manager and say, okay, I want uh, an 8K uh, rendering. Obviously, uh, at the beginning, you're gonna switch this uh, composition to 8K. For instance, I switch this composition to 8K. And as you can see here, I can move uh, my um, volumetric rays uh, center effect to generate um, to generate rays in 8K. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about this today. But when you have um, a composition, for instance, set in Full HD here, you can override here the um, format in the viewer. Okay, to say I am working on a full HD composition, but now I want to switch to 4K or I want to switch to 8K. And as you can see, just take a look before I switch to 8K, I have 39% zoom in the viewer. Now I'm going to switch to 8K. Everything has been converted from HD to 8K. If you add a blur, if you add, for instance, here, this uh, center, this volumetric rays who make this ray passing through the window, Everything will be converted. You don't have to think about, okay, I have to multiply this blur value, this blur size value by four, or I have to multiply this position by four. You don't have to do this. Everything will be recomputed automatically. So you can work with AK source in a HD um, composition to have a more responsive, uh, a more responsive software to work quickly. And at the end, you can say, okay, I work in Full HD, but now I want to convert everything to 8K. And now everything will be rendered to 8K using your 8K sources. Okay, so that's two ways to work. Um, the proxy is one way to speed up your process. And the other way is to work with, uh, for example, a Full HD composition. Obviously, you have to have exactly the same ratio. Okay, if you switch from uh, 166 or 177 to uh, 2 uh, 0.35, uh, some parts will be extended or cropped, okay? And it's another topic because uh, Autograph can work on responsive design composition when you can change the position of elements according uh, the format of the composition. But to answer your question more precisely uh, in the question of AK, you can do this. You can work on HD composition, maybe pre-render or render a HD file to uh, have a validation for your client. And when everyone is happy, uh, you can simply say, okay, I work on Full HD, but I want to have exactly the same thing in AK. I hope this respond will reply to your question. Let me know. <laughs> so I get back to this uh, 
Thank you, sounds good. Very interesting and option for composite printing, practically no learning curve. Thank you very much for your feedback. I really appreciate it. <laughs> I hope you enjoy your demo. Uh, so thank you. Thank you very much for being here today. Thank you to you all and see you next time. Thank you very much. Have a nice day and have a nice weekend for the people uh, who will be in weekend soon. Bye bye.